I told these fellows, I said, well, today looks like it's the deal because they put the pulpit on the platform. So either they were mad at me or I, I wish, I wish today that we were a little more comfortable in the administration of apostolic gifts because I'm not so convinced that what moved in here a while ago in the way you begin to operate as a body was just simply not the perfect will of God. Sometimes we put so much emphasis and I am a preacher first and foremost. I do not believe music can do what preaching can do. I do not believe singing can do what preaching can do. I don't think there's anything in the world that can do what preaching can do. Uh, nowhere will you find music breaking yokes, but preaching has that power. That being said, there was such a administration of gifts and the body ministering to the body from itself and to itself. And that is the mark of a true apostolic environment. And you ought to compliment yourself because that happened here today. What, what a beautiful experience. Um, it has been such a, a joy and privilege of, to be here. And I, as a sibling, I joke a lot about uh, my older brother, Brother Shalom, and I probably are more in common with brothers in ministry. But um, I, I, I do want you to know that I am so appreciative of the ministry uh, that God has placed upon my older brother and the vision for global uh, impact ministries, not just staying in North America and being comfortable, not just pastoring one local church, but the burden and the passion uh, to take concepts and principles around the world into every local assembly, more importantly, impact the ministry. And so I, I want to salute him today. Please record this so I don't ever have to say it again and we just press play. But I salute him and the wonderful team and the Canada great honor uh, to be here today and represent such a great, great, great thing. Amen. And then uh, to be here with other fellow ministers of the gospel, uh, men that stand shoulder to shoulder in our beliefs, in our faith in our tenacity, uh, that's what makes the ministry and the call of God so beautiful is the brotherhood. Uh, we, can have, we can have some minor disagreements and be all right. Hopefully it's nothing major, but um, I appreciate every man of God that's here today. If you're a missionary, you always have my heart. Uh, there's, there's not many times, I'd lie to you if I said every time I pray, but there's not many times that I pray that I do not pray for the table that carries and holds the shoe bread as as important as the bread was so is the table so the task that you have as a missionary to take the gospel into places i want you to know that there's a preacher and from the state of arkansas that doesn't just pray for the bread but i pray for the table that holds the bread and so to missionaries with, with wives and children, sacrifices that you make, leaving, leaving the land of familiarity and going and learning a culture and being thrust into an environment that is not acceptable, accepting of what you are and the mandate that you have been given from God. So today, to every missionary, to every missionary's wife, to every preacher, to every preacher's kid, I want you to know I'm a nobody and a nothing, but I salute you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless and keep you. And that I so mean. Um, I, I, after this week, I don't even know how to find anything to conclude on a day like today. Um, last night, I feasted on the Word of God. In case you don't know it, Brother, Brother Hughes is my hero. Um, 
I, I can sit and listen to Brother Hughes for hours, and, and, you know, I don't ever look at a clock because it's just food. It's, it's word. I am a word guy. Um, I, I am almost done with a master's degree uh, in divinity or theology, which is blah, blah, um, just because I want to know more about the Word of God. I want to know how to read it. I want to know how to digest it. Um, understand it. I want to know how to communicate with people that I pastor. So um, he is, I don't know how that brain works. Is this okay? I, I mean, he can take the same verse. I've studied for 15 million times and get everything out of it, and I can't get anything out of it. I'm like, my God, he, God is a respecter of persons. I just, I just got to believe that. And uh, to all of my fellow uh, preachers today, ministry here today, Brother Nate, Brother Grant from the great state of California, they are major contributors. They are major supporters of global impact. Matter of fact, a lot of what's going on here today is because of those two guys. The Lord is blessing them. They are just transfer. They're just conduits of blessing. And uh, the sky's the limit with that understanding. So I salute both of you great men in Jesus. I know you don't want me to do this, but honor is, is right. Amen. And then Brother and Sister Sham, I, I'm going to get in trouble mentioning all these names, but um, I, I, I don't know that I've ever officially met you. But, man, I love you. I think we got a bromance going on. I, I just, I just like apostolic people who, who don't give a rip. I, I, I'm serious. And that's, that's kind of the way I feel about brother and sister Sean. The kingdom matters and nothing much else. And I, I like that. I like that. And then, uh, brother Caleb and his wonderful, precious wife and my future daughter-in-laws, <laughs> so the quicker we can get them together the quicker we'll be happy <laughs> i wish we'd go back to biblical times we'll just make that happen right now but i have met him in times past but have never got to spend any time with him and uh i i, I just appreciate again that apostolic i don't give a rip attitude I appreciate that. Brothers and sisters, Zen are not strangers. Um, I, I, I love this family. Um, if there is the epitome of sacrifice and loving a world and people in the world, it's brother and sister Zen. Amen. To the district board, to you leaders and the great country of Malaysia, I salute you. And then last but certainly not least, Bishop and his lovely wife, they have taken such good care of me. Not that that matters, but I do like good coffee. And I got up this morning and opened my door, and there was two huge bags of coffee tied to my door. And I said, manna did not cease. <laughs> and they have just, they have made me feel so comfortable. Um, and I, I now... Here's what I here's what I think. Now they've asked me to come back next year, and I, I said only if I could bring my wife. And I think Nate and Grant need to come back. Um, but I believe that next year, one year ago from last night, that nothing less than fifty first time apostolic tongue talkers will be born one year ago from last night. I, I, I have, uh, I've been privileged to do a little bit of traveling and have preached crusades many places. And I've seen 10,420 some received the Holy Ghost in about 10 minutes. 
And I make trips every year to preach crusades in certain parts of this world, and we see hundreds and thousands get the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to tell you something. What I felt here last night is exactly what I feel when thousands get the Holy Ghost in other countries. You broke into something last night where the fields are open. The world is coming to the doorstep of the church. You're not just going to be added to, but you're going to start being multiplied. I feel very prophetic. The God adding to the church is over. Now you've gone into that book of Acts timetable where God starts multiplying the church. This will double next year. Next year will be double the following year. And then it's going to start being multiplied. And before long, you're not going to have place to hold this type of meeting. You're going to have to divide and conquer. I'm not just talking. I'm prophesying right now what the Spirit wants to do in Malaysia. Amen. Amen. I was preaching a revival some two years ago, three years ago for Brother Sullivan in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and we had had many great things happen, but they had only had about seven get the Holy Ghost. That was their maximum number in 70-some years of having church. Now, that's not bad, um, but we understand, and so God had elevated their faith to such a level that on the Sunday that I was preaching, the spirit of prophecy came, and I said, next Sunday, we will have nothing less than 50 receive the Holy Ghost, and they were as quiet as you are right now. <laughs> Brother Sullivan thought, oh, my Lord, he doesn't know that we've only had seven, and to jump from 70 to 50 plus, and so I flew back home to my church and preached my midweek, stayed home, and then Went back the next weekend for revival and just got to preaching just like I preach. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost said, it's time right now. And I said, if you want the Holy Ghost, stand right where you are. Don't even come to the front. Just stand up. And so a bunch of people stood up. And I said, I want you to lift your hands right now. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Ghost. And it went just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, to 59 first-time people. So when I tell you 50-plus next year is what God wants to do, you ought to start working right now on getting 50-plus people here next year that need the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Bishop and your lovely wife, thank you. Uh, getting to know you, getting to meet you has been a highlight and an honor, and uh, I salute you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, every time I'm with Brother Hughes, I think I'm a preacher. Until he starts. And then I think, <sighs> I don't know nothing. How in the world can you get all of that in your head right? So um, I, I, I thought I'd come up here today and try to be Brother Hughes, but nah. I thought about trying to be my brother, but I'd have to gain some weight and lose some height. <laughs> Uh, let's keep some things quiet. But 